Welcome to Next to Madison, a podcast to help you live your best life. Hey, welcome back to another exciting episode of Next to Madison. Oh my gosh, this is episode 136. We are doing this. Uh, gosh, you guys, it's like a less, almost a week until Christmas. I hope everybody has gotten their Christmas shopping done. I know there are some interesting things that I have come across, which I'll like to mention. They do not pay me. They do not sponsor me. This is an honest, honest message. Uh, Ninja Air Fryer, the double drawer one, went over to a friend's. She cooked a amazing filet from Whole Foods and then got the organic 365 french fries put those in both for like 25 or 29 minutes, walked away, came back. Of course, she had seasoned the steak. It was the best thing I'd ever had. Ninja Air Fryer, I'm definitely going to be getting that for a lucky person on my list, uh, along with the Vitamix, which was also something I found. And then, um, yeah, I've still got a lots of other people to shop for. So if you have gift ideas, you know, reach out, give me ideas. I need help. I'm not a shopper. I usually am the laziest Christmas shopper. I actually will do gift cards. I'm that person, but I like receiving gift cards. You know, don't buy me a sweater I might not wear. I'd rather just go pick it out. So that's just me. And don't forget the under the, the value of, uh, or don't underestimate the value of homemade gifts. Um, when you've taken the time to write a really nice card or make something for somebody, it just hits so much differently and i know we're going through such a crazy time um some things are delayed with this supply chain crisis and just our crazy uh world right now um but don't forget the true meaning of christmas it's about uh jesus and being around those that you love and so just remember it, it as great as it is to buy gifts and get gifts the real meaning of Christmas is not that. And we'll be talking more about Christmas. Obviously, we've got another episode uh, before Christmas. Last week, we talked about vision boards. I talked a little bit about that. Great reception on that. People want to hear more. I'm actually going to share you with you guys. And maybe I'll do an episode where I'm actually kind of building a vision board and, and the process I'm going through to make a new one for 2022 going forward forward. So it's okay to uh, get rid of the old vision board, maybe keep some things you want, but kind of update because we all change. But anyways, uh, let's get to today's episode. I'm actually sitting down with uh, this guy, super talented. He's a comedian. He's a songwriter. He's a director. He's a producer. He's worked with Martin Scorsese. Can't wait to hear that story. He's also written a number one hit wedding song. Don't even know. I don't even know if this guy's in a relationship. Like, how would you write a wedding song? So hopefully we'll get the good details on that. And if you're getting married, maybe this will be the song that you're going to use. Um, so yeah, lots of exciting stuff. Uh, we've got a uh, lot of uh, great episodes uh, coming up. So make sure to stay tuned for those, obviously, every week. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, also, if you're enjoying this show, it would mean so much to me and the rest of the team if you would leave us a review. It helps us get found uh, easier in the uh, search in uh, both Apple and Spotify, so that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. And again, I'm so grateful for every single one of you that have supported this show and supported me and supported our guests on this journey. I keep having amazing uh, people reach out wanting to be on the show. Uh, we're making a difference. And I love hearing stories where people say, I listened to this episode and your guests recommended these books. And I went out and bought all of them. And now I'm on to this fun new project. So, um, oh, and also, Make sure it's so important to stay positive. We are, uh, for you cryptocurrency people out there, uh, we are in a, a dip. I wouldn't call it a bear market. I've talked to other experts. Not a bear market yet. I don't think if you're new to this game, you've seen a bear market. Um, but hold on for the ride. You know, be, be positive, be optimistic, be long-term, be smart. Um, and the same with the stock market. You know, we're coming into some turbulent times ahead. I just feel it. I'm no psychic, but I can feel it. Uh, so yeah, stay positive. But anyways, I'm going to start, stop yapping my trap and we're going to bring our guest on Gary Robinson. Uh, How you doing? I, Thanks for having me on. Yeah. I'm so excited to have you on. I would call you a jack of all trades. Like how the heck did you get into, I mean, what was your path into entertainment? 
But when I was younger, I always used to love the movies like Star Wars, Raiders of the Lost Dark, all the kind of big adventure movies when I was a little kid. And my brother and I would watch those movies every day when we got home on VHS. Remember VHS? <laughs> so for, Oddly enough, I do. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, pretend you don't. Uh, you're right. probably just born <laughs> right yeah, when VHS right, came not out. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> so I was really inspired by the storytelling. I, Spielberg had the way he crafts stories. And, you know, Luke is creating this alternate, alternate universe and just how amazing it would be to create these completely different universes and tell these amazing stories. And that kind of what inspired me to tell stories. And yeah. um, so luckily when I was in college, um, a, uh, the chairman of the Fox Affiliates Board, uh, Marty Colby, became kind of a mentor to me. And he hooked me up with uh, Quincy Jones Entertainment. So right out of school, right in my last year of school, he got me an internship for Quincy Jones Entertainment. And they were just starting up the Fresh Prince Bel Air and all kinds of stuff. And the cool thing about that was that when I, as soon as I moved up here um, for that summer, they're doing a blast off party for the company. And the first call I got to RSVP for the party was Harrison Ford. And oh it was God. like, an, it was, it was not a body experience. Cause like I had seen this guy probably 200 times, you know, on, uh, in the movies. And so it was just amazing. He's all, this is Harrison Ford. I'm just calling her RSVP with uh, Melissa, his, his wife at the time. And I'm all, Oh my God, this is so bizarre. <laughs> so um, yeah. So then after, after that, I just moved up here awesome. and, uh, interned for a, an advertising firm and I, st I started editing promos for them. And then after school, I, I graduated, I moved up here and I started editing and producing promos for all different TV programs. And so I did thousands of those and kind of built up a reel in, in promos and, um, and just kept working in kind of different areas. I mean, that, so, so you, you, would you say you've had a pretty awesome career so far? I, I don't know. I always look at like what I haven't done yet. And I, you know, I haven't directed yeah. a feature yet. So okay. I'm never really that like, I, I, I think you hit these plateaus in your career yeah. and then you see, all right, what's ahead and what can I do next? Mm -hmm. And that's what keeps, that's what keeps me going at least. It's like, what, what's the next step? What haven't I done that I want to do that I can accomplish? And, you know, so it's always a work in progress and I'm never really that satisfied with my career yet. <laughs> yeah. But, well, do you feel you have a positive mindset? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think you have to. I think you have to keep yeah. that positive mindset if you want to keep going in anything. Well, you're a comedian, and usually comedians can go to the dark side. Oh, yeah. So it's good that you're able to kind of, you know, because when I was doing a ton of stand-up in New York, I would run across comedians that will not be named. But just the negativity and the victimhood. There was one gentleman in particular. He came from L.A. <clears throat> Every time I saw him, like, hey, so good to see you. How are you? And it was just a million complaints right out of his mouth. And I go, you ever think that maybe that's, you're super talented. Maybe you're not where you want to be because your attitude and your mindset needs oh, to Oh, yeah. Needs I think that's, change. yeah, that's probably very common in the comedy community. Very common. It's very sad. I'm glad that we're both have been able to be out of it. I used to be there. I got out of it. You sound like you've never been in it. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of comedians, you know, Jim Carrey did this great speech on, on Spike TV when he was accepting an award. He said, you know, comedy comes from pain. And, I, and most people know that, that a lot of comedy yeah. co does come from pain. We all have but, pain. But you don't want to live in it. You know, you want, yes. I, I mean, the great thing about comedy is how, the thing I love about comedy is it makes you look at the world in, in, a, in a different way. It makes you see yeah. the, the humor in everything. Mm -hmm. So that's the positive of it. But a lot of people who are in comedy, they come from pain. So there's a lot of social problems. There's a lot of chemical problems. And um, if you can avoid some of those, you know, hopefully you can have a, a positive outcome and, and life in comedy and still perform and still be good. Yeah. And what I do love about comedy is, is, you know, some of these people that have had, you know, trauma in their lives, not something that they've asked for, just something that they've had to deal with. At least comedy provides such an outlet for yeah. that. And it's like, thank God for for laughter and, you know, being able to, to laugh at, at you know, life, because life is actually pretty funny. The only reason we have problems mainly is because we take it too damn seriously. Yeah. That's at least my two cents. No, that's, I, I totally agree. And now more than ever, I mean, people need a comedy. I mean, this has been a very trying couple of years. So I know to be able to make light of some of this, and there's a lot of pain out there, there's a lot of problems. And I mean, it's all around us, but to, um, to be able to get people into a room and laugh and feel that you're bringing something to their lives, at least for a few hours, is a great feeling. So yeah. I mean, comedy now more than ever is important. 
Yeah, no, it really, really is. So what's, um, I, I, one of the things that, uh, about you that I really want to know, we're going to backtrack just a little bit is you worked with Martin Scorsese. Well, I worked for his, yeah, I, I was, I worked for his foundation okay. and, um, it, that was kind of exciting for me because it, it's, it's really amazing to work. Like you never think you're going to work with some of your heroes. Like you think, okay, they're way over there. Yeah. And, like even doing comedy, like I just did stand up comedy with Bill Burr and, you know, what? Jamie Kennedy and like all these people, uh, Daryl Hammond, you know, uh, all these people you never think you're going to work with. And then it's such a small world in a small town that you end up like crossing paths or working with them. So, <laughs> so Martin Scorsese, like I, I did, I was hired to work for the, his foundation and I created my, the first 4k resolution logo I ever created was for his foundation for, for he has this uh, project called the world cinema project that brings attention to under, under, um, underfunded uh, films and, and film, foreign films that, that need to be restored. And uh, so I did the logo for his World Cinema Project and it was airing like at, at, in theatrical releases and I did some sizzle oh, reels cool. and some other various projects. So it was just a, such an honor to even work for him, you know, in any capacity. Yeah. But, and you just cross paths with these people. You can't, like, I couldn't believe I were, I interviewed for Quincy Jones. I mean, it's so bizarre. It's like, you know, I was such a fan of Michael Jackson and uh, the work yeah. he'd done. And it's just so a, did you did you ever get a go over to the Fresh Prince of Bel Air set? Yeah, a couple times. <laughs> and I love that show growing up. That was one of my favorites. Yeah, very popular program, and it was fun to see behind the scenes how they were putting it together, and they're filming the first few episodes. And you may notice that um, um, was uh, who's the star of that? What's his name? Uh, Will Smith. Yeah. He would he he that was his first real big acting gig. And he would learn his lines so well. If you look closely on some of those episodes, he's he's mouthing the lines of his co-stars. <laughs> like so, he's like kind of mouthing their lines too because he learned it so well that he he wasn't saying their lines, but he was mouthing them a little bit. You know, wow. <laughs> so, I, he's probably learned that lesson. I, mean, I think a lot of actors, you know, over time they learn lessons. It's like anything; you you get better as you go. So yeah but it's it's interesting to see and you can probably that's probably on youtube they probably have like a little detail of him mouthing lines of his co-stars so it's kind of a trip but um yeah that's that's one thing i never i never did in um when i was younger was go to watch one of those live sitcoms i always wish i did because i loved like full house and um family matters and bella fresh prince of bella those were like my my things when i was a little kid oh cool Dude, what about family ties do you, you ever see that? I've seen it, but I, I can't think oh. of the characters right now. So maybe Growing Pains. Growing Pains I saw. I felt like that started a little bit before I started watching that. But yeah, yeah I, I knew Growing Pains. In fact, I actually, I think I was uh, recovering from COVID and I was watching some reruns that was on. Uh, it was a while uh -huh. ago. I'm over it. Trust me, I'm good. Oh, um, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> COVID was the best thing that ever happened to me. It made me feel like a superhuman. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got, I'm jacked with antibodies and I'm like, good to go. <laughs> I don't live yeah. here. Like it was, it was honestly like a blessing, a blessing in disguise is what I call it. I was out for like a week and I was tired, but now I'm like a superhuman. People will call me and be like, I have COVID. I'm like, that's excellent. You're going to be so much better now. How long ago did you have it? Oh my God. April, March, April. Oh wow. So not yeah. too long ago. Yeah. I, I think I had it a year back in May of 2020. And uh, oh, early, yeah, yeah. And I'm it was before we knew about the aerosols. And I walked into a restaurant to pick something up, and I thought I'll be fine, you know, whatever. Yeah. And because we know just thought as long as you stay six feet away from everybody, you're fine. Yeah, but we didn't know the aerosols are filling the air in these smaller areas. So, like, I'm pretty sure I caught it. And then, and because I after I got the um, the vaccine, I, I went to the doctor because I had a pinched nerve for like a few months. That was a real fun process uh, yeah. but he tested me for antibodies said you have really high antibodies probably because i had covid and the yes. vaccine so yes well that's yeah. what they say and and you know people are starting to get these these boosters too and i always tell them before like get your antibodies checked because your the vaccines can actually have a negative impact if your antibodies are too high because what the vaccine does is it's delivering antibodies right mm -hmm. to give you protection from this virus that your body may most or have it hasn't come in contact with and if you give it an overload, it, it can't do its job and it, your body's going to go into a negative reaction. So yeah. it's really important. I wish the news would say that, but I wish the news would say a lot of things. Anyways, back to comedy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been doing comedy, by the way, stand-up? Oh my God. 
11 years. Oh, wow. I, okay. I still love it, but I, I've really gotten more into like the writing and um, creative process and the reality side. So that's kind of been my main focus. Well, that's my favorite part of comedy is when you write a new bit and you see the audience react to something you just created. And if it's got a great reaction, it's like money in the bank. And you're like, you're oh, oh, so awesome. Yeah, I just, I love stand up, but it's like, I don't really like the life so that much. Yeah. So I'm trying to focus on more of the television side of, of yeah things. the media and i think people like my ideas more they don't want me on camera but they love my ideas on camera um which is fine i don't give a shit let, yeah let, i mean whatever works to get botox right you know what i mean <laughs> you don't look like you need any botox or anything that's because i have it <laughs> <laughs> Duh. Well, this is all natural people just my forehead you know <laughs> look i still look angry mm. <laughs> I just like the people have no expression after they get a lot of Botox. It's like, you know, you can't I tell just, they're smiling. Yeah, you, you look expressive still. And like, yeah, and like a, just that wears off, and then I know it's just it's preventative. The forehead's not necessary anyway <laughs> for expression. It's all <laughs> your your smile isn't up there anyway. So it's really not. I mean, people are so used to my forehead not moving, so <laughs> it's not like it's weird. They're like, her forehead has never moved. Never. <laughs> So we're just used to it. Yeah, well, that, that's good. That works. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. So um, I want to talk about this hit wedding song. What is, can you play it for us? Oh, I, oh I, I'm not really set up. You know what I, um, let me see, what's the best way? Oh, I can maybe play it on my phone. you're doing that, tell us about a wedding song, because I remember when your PR agent was talking to me, and I was like, huh? I'm going to pull it up on Spotify. Wedding Thanks. song? Well, here's the, the weird thing about this. So I've written a lot of songs, right? Like okay. the first song I wrote was, um, I, I became friends with a, an actor named Jeremy Jordan who starred in the movie Never Been Kissed and he's an outstanding yeah. singer. He was a pop star back in the 90s. He had like a top 10 hit single called The Right Kind of Love back in the 90s. And um, at the time, I, you know, I wanted to bring attention to the homeless problem. So I wrote some lyrics about the homeless and then he put it to music and I'm like, wow, these are, this is great. And my neighbor happened to be an amazing uh, uh, musician with a, a, a recording studio so we went in and recorded it one day and then I filmed the music video in a sound stage right next to it at the same day and I'm like wow that looked, worked out pretty well and then that was 13 years ago and since then I've been writing songs and um wow. so you know I did a, a variety of songs with him and then I worked with another outstanding artist named Mitchell and we did some songs like some more political songs and we did a song called the goodbye song that was kind of written about my ex-wife um too and <laughs> but what it's is, a nice what song. did she think about it <laughs> i don't i haven't asked her i don't even know if she knows that's about her but i did send her the new song though so what happened was i found these lyrics over covid i was going through all my old lyrics i'm like well these are really nice lyrics yeah and this was and i didn't i forgot i wrote them and what happened was when i got married 11 years ago I wrote this song because um, Jeremy performed at my wedding too. I'm divorced now, so but this okay. is like, like a prequel to the goodbye song. Got so, it. Um, <laughs> so I wrote this song about marriage, and I thought, oh, you know, I haven't played it at the wedding, but I completely forgot I wrote it. So I finished a song. I, you know, I, I produced it. I hired a singer for it because I'm not. I'm, I'm taking singing lessons, but I'm not there yet. I got. I got probably another year or two to go before you're gonna hear me sing. I, I did rap on a song though. So we right. put the song out and um, here, I'll play a little bit of it if I can pull it up. And I just thought it was like, it, I, I call it the wedding song of the decade because I think it's so nice because it, it's got the idea of what you're going into when you try to get married, which is this idealistic view of, of life and, and, and the person and everything like that. And you just hope it's going to work out. Um, well, that's, you know. and that's the sad part is the hope. In a way, I, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I think that I that's the happy part. The sad part is when it doesn't happen. You know, that's true. I want to guarantee, but I guess nothing's guaranteed in life. I don't know. As as the older I'm getting, um, the you're more, almost twenty five now. Exactly. Yeah. But the more I'm seeing marriage as like a a bad business contract. <laughs> How it can be a good business that? contract too. So, well, I know, but I, but then I'm like, you know, I could if I got married, like. You know, at least I'd have somebody to pay half half the house payment, half the bills. Like, versus being on your own, you pay for everything, right? Wait, wait you've been married? No. Oh, wow! Really? I tell. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't couldn't tell. Do you have kids? I have a four-legged kid. 
Wow. Huh. Okay. You've avoided the uh, landmine of marriage. I mean, it can be a good thing. Like if you find the right person. I, mean, I don't know if I avoided it that hard. I just never met the right person. And I also don't want to settle. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, it's so funny you said that. Cause like that reminds me of it, an actor friend of mine who married, who got married a long time ago. And I, I don't, I haven't talked to him in a long time, so I don't know. I hope his marriage yeah. is going fine. But he said, at one point <laughs> he said, you just have to settle. And I'm like, no, no like settle. Like, you know, like, Ooh. I mean, you, you know, you want to be, I, I mean, happy to get married and inspired to get married. Um, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to find this. You're going to find I'm the gonna, song as we talk. I'm gonna, well, I'm, I'm going to get it on, a, I'll put it on YouTube. Yeah, I'm, always, um, I'm not, a, I'm not against it. Maybe I should have a marriage expert on the podcast because I just have a very, like, I have a very warm heart and I'm very kind and stuff, but like, you know, when you've been relationships haven't worked out or things of that sort. And as you get older, you get very stuck in your ways and then you yeah. start becoming more successful and you don't, you don't want to, you, you don't want to compromise as much. So my advice to everybody who's under the age of 30 or 25, like if you're in college, marry the person you're in college with. It's going to be so much easier to build together. <laughs> I disagree. I'm going to disagree with that I, okay. because I think that nobody ought to get married under 30. I think, well, I think I mean, you're right here's the thing though. There, was that? I said, that's true. There's yeah. I mean, I, I just don't think you know yourself well enough. I think you have to know, you have to be comfortable with yourself before you can be comfortable with the other person. I think, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of examples of people growing together if they meet in college or whatever, but I, I, I just like, I don't think I was ready to get married before 30. I got married at 40 and I should have, maybe I, I mean, for a woman, I mean, obviously you're, you got the clock ticking a little bit. So if you want kids, you, you want to get married, you know, before 35, obviously. Oh, you but... can rip those puppies out and put them in a bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can do that. Oh, oops, wrong song. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I, I just haven't met the right person. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, well, how do you try to meet them? Because that's part of comedy is like finding like dealing with like trying to, to find somebody because it, it's such a weird process. It's really like a job interview for something that's hopefully long term. <laughs> you know? Well, I, right. And that's the thing, too. And like being kind of set in your ways or like the vision you have for your life. Like I, I, I love being single because I love my life. Right. Yeah. I love my friends. I love my family. I get to kind of do whatever the hell I want. I mean, I'm going to go and, and get, uh, you know, I decided I'm going to get an apartment in Florida and maybe I'll make my full-time residence in Florida. And then I'm going to get a business apartment up in New York city. And then I'm going to maybe have a place near my parents. So it's like, but if you add a husband into that, like he's basically going to have to be a business owner that can like travel and move around and live in multiple States. Like it becomes very difficult. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hadn't really thought of that angle. That is very interesting. The freedom you have. I'm living the life. Yeah. Life. What do you What do you not like? Oh, so you, you don't like about being single is that you, you know you don't have the what do you, oh yeah what don't you like about what being I single? don't like so about don't have being the companion? single is I don't have anyone to split the rent with. Uh, <laughs> I <was> such, I <laughs> it's a very economic thing. Like, I'm very smart business wise. Um, mm -hmm. right. It's more expensive on your own. Um, you know, when you want to like travel or go away on a weekend or like go see something, it's kind of like you have to go through your friends that are all like have families and stuff and try to schedule something. You really have to get in front of it in advance because most of them aren't. So it'd be nice to have like a travel partner. It'd be nice to have somebody that like has your back. But again, I haven't met that person. So for me, I just see pain in the app. You know what I mean? <laughs> How do you meet guys normally? Because you're you obviously not going to bars now because like nobody's going to bars really if they can avoid it. I don't know where you're at, but COVID's over where I'm at. Um, I'm oh, that's good. <laughs> like, congrats. Bars. Yeah. I was like, no, <laughs> this virus is over. Like, I don't, yeah, I trust me. I've been at packed parties, back bars, packed offices. Um, no, I would meet that, like my OnlyFans page. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I do not have an OnlyFans page. Yeah, that's stupid. a great dating site. I should have done that. It's called awesome. OnlyFans, but you probably have a lot of fans on there. <laughs> so. Yeah, apparently. I don't know. Somebody, so I said, I could never do an OnlyFans page. I don't judge. I think these women are fucking so smart. And men. Um, I just, you know, I've got a good relationship with my family, and they wouldn't approve, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm pretty religious. Yeah. Um, you know, I, as my friends say, you're a Jesus lover that loves dick jokes. And I said, Jesus loves everybody. So <laughs> there are cool, dirty Christians out there. I'm one of them. I'm one of yeah. them.
but my favorite thing is when artists use OnlyFans and they think it's like a fan site for artists, like, you know, com comedians or musicians or whatever. It's like, it's a porn site. Come on. Well, my one friend told me, because I always wear a cross usually, and my one friend told, and I got big old fake titties. So my one friend. So do I. So. <laughs> My one friend said, you should, you should, you, we could leave your face out of it. We'll just start an OnlyFans page called Tits and Crosses. It'll kind of like, I should do that. Well, now I just outed myself. But you know what I mean? It'll just be pictures of like, like covered, like in like slutty, like bikini tops or with like cool crosses. I don't know. I might make a fortune. You'll probably find a market. That's pretty good. I would definitely find a market because people would be like, what? And then people would be like, how could, if they find out, they'd be like, how could you do that? You're religious. And I'm like, because Jesus loves everybody. Yeah. Created us all, right? So we're all good. Yeah. And like, trust me, I'm a lot better rich than I am not. <laughs> and I can help more people. <laughs> yeah, that's right. good. Let's, let's take this podcast off my tits and off. Uh, oh. So let's hear the marriage song now that we've just found, now that every uh, audience member on this. Is oh, here, I'll play you a little bit of this song. Oh. We'll see if you can hear it. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. I'll turn it way up. I can hear it. I've traveled a million miles and seen a thousand things. Looked all over the world and searched in far off places. But the search is over. You're the only one. The world's the sky. You're the sun. You got the idea. You just need this song and you'll find the right guy. I know you just inspired me to not be so like, I need somebody to pay half money. Yeah, you gotta play this at your wedding, okay? I gotta guarantee you, right? <laughs> anyway, you got the idea. Anyway, so there's a there's a lyric video on YouTube. It's it's on all your, your sites. Now let's see if I can turn this off. Anyway, so that, yeah, it, anyway, I just thought it was funny that those were long lost lyrics from 11 years ago that I completely forgot about. And then they made, I think what is a very pretty song. So it worked out nice. Was it weird writing this song, knowing that it didn't work out? Well, I mean, there, I, I kept the lyrics almost as is from when I found them. And I, I wrote the lyrics 11 years ago before the wedding and I found them and I, and I just liked the lyrics. And I, so I liked the inspiration for it. I mean, it didn't work out the way. I hope the sequel song isn't as good, isn't as yeah. nice. The goodbye song is not as nice as it could only be you. <laughs> but <laughs> so there's a, there's a sequel. There's a, there's a prequel to that song. song okay. that, yeah. Spotify under DJ Sharpcut. So anyway, people okay, love so it. How now. did you come up with that name? That alias name, DJ Sharpcut? Oh, because when I started my production company, when you send out cuts to clients, you call them uh, rough cuts, right? Yeah. So I'd always say like the idea, oh, sharp cut. That's a, like, that's a more refined cut of something or an edit. Sharp. So I, I start Sharp Cut Productions and then I did uh, Sharp Cut Comedy and, uh, and, and I thought, oh, I needed to have a, a, a name for all my music I was doing independently because I was working with other artists, but now I'm doing my own songs. And I look, Gary Robinson, there's a few taken out there already. So I didn't want to be competing with all these other names. So I just said, oh, DJ Sharp Cut. So. I, I think it's great. And, and also I'd been DJing um, a lot of comedy shows too, like hundreds of them. Cause we had a weekly show at the comedy store and I would be the DJ too, along with performing. So um, I had to come up with, a, I was DJing all the time anyway. So I'm kind of a DJ. <laughs> so. Oh, that's great. So are you, on, are you on the tour? Are you on tour at all? Like, are you? Not yet. No, not, not, not. I, I want to put together, I've got another several songs I want to do. I mean, I've okay. done like, uh, you know, a couple dozen songs with other artists and stuff, but I want to, um, I'm creating my own album, my own like library of, of music. And then ultimately maybe I'll tour a little bit, but more, it'll probably be more comedy. I, that's the fun thing about doing comedy. Like you can tour. I always wanted to travel and be able to perform where I travel. And I, I can do that now, go to Vegas and perform or go yeah. to San Francisco. Like I, I visited my brother in Palo Alto and then I performed at the San Jose Improv. So that's probably like fun for you, I'm sure, is that you can go to different areas and perform too, if you want. Yeah. I mean, which it is, and which is great. So you kind of have those those choices. You know, I, I spent a lot of time during COVID in Colorado, and then I I was in New York the past six weeks. I just got back last night. That is so interesting of those two places. Like, why? I mean, they are very different places to live. Like, what do you like about the two of them? Well, Colorado, I grew up here, so my oh. family's here. And then um, in New York, I originally went there for finance. Hmm. And then um, I was like... Uh, 
corporate America is for the bird. So I decided to go broke and tell dick jokes. So joke was actually on me. Um, but now, wait, you you, you don't up. get two thousand a night doing comedy? What? <laughs> you're not getting. You're not. You don't get the, the regular, the standard two thousand a night doing a, a set and a ten minute set of comedy or what? Not unless you're sucking dick. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> well, no. I am. No, just kidding. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So it's been, um, uh, but yeah, no, comedy's been good. It's led me into a lot of really, really cool creative things. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped about my career. I, I can't share anything right now, which is kind of shitty. People are like, you're still doing comedy, but it was fun to get back in New York because it's like where I was and I, and I know like everybody there. So it was fun to just get up all the time. Yeah. Kind of well, have that, with it from a different lens, you know? That's a weird evolution of comedy is that jokes you tell last year could become, could make, get you canceled next year if you don't like, if you're not, you know, it's like you can, things evolve so quickly as far as like the way society looks at humor, like, trying to cancel Dave Chappelle over some jokes is a crazy oh, thing. To don't even get me started. I know. Yeah. And like, that's the whole thing about comedy is to offend half the room and, and embrace half the room. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You're creating like, tension in the room and then you're releasing it with uh, humor. So. Right. And that's the thing too, is like people need to stop being offended. Like yeah. you, there's a million things I can be offended by. Like people look at me and they're like, Oh, you have your, your life seems together. I'm like, that's not, that's not true at all. I look extremely wealthy and I'm getting there, but I'm not as rich as I look. Do you know how offensive that is when people think that I can afford their expensive <laughs> shit? Very expensive. <laughs> you know? When realtors approach me and they're like, we just had this apartment drop to 5 million. I'm like, bitch, I just look rich. Stop making me depressed. <laughs> so there's a million things you can be offended by. You know what yeah. I mean? People just, I think what happened was we became, we cowtailed too much to the fucking pussies of the world. And then they just felt entitled like, oh, I don't like that. So because I don't like that, nobody else can like that. I had a, a, a um, uh, not a family member, um, a family friend, let's call it a family friend. And they were very like prude and just didn't want to hear jokes. And so you would have an, if they were at the at the dinner or the party nobody else could enjoy the jokes because everybody else was was worried about offending this karen we're going to call her and it, <laughs> i feel sorry for all the karens of the world that's now the derogatory <laughs> well, i do too because all the karens i actually know are amazing people yeah. so yeah. um i'm trying to think of some 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 mean girls i know yeah i don't know a lot of mean people i don't know it's good not to. It's good. I really don't. I don't really hate anybody. I'm like, eh. It's just funny the way like comedy evolves because when I first started, I my whole thing was I was trying to be trying to do complete shock comedy. So I was trying to say the most outrageous, crazy, like you know, sometimes racist, sometimes mis misogynist stuff that would definitely get me canceled now. Right. But it would it would get laughs consistently. So I've had to completely evolve my act because over Zoom I started doing Zoom comedy. Yeah. And then um you know so I totally evolved that and now I brought now I can actually put stuff out that probably won't get me canceled I hope but you never know then next year that something will look at like I make fun of Caitlyn Jenner I mean then that might be bad next year who knows you know but um well that, and, that, and that's the thing too it's kind of like you know I think I think a lot of people finally have recognized that cancel culture has gone too far but you have to think about life as a pendulum right so like you're that exactly I'm like I haven't worked out in two weeks so I have my arm might be flabbing um <laughs> so I'm like hey Okay, so it was like here where everybody was like, go fuck your mother, right? Like, touch my, touch my dick. Women don't deserve to be in the workplace. I'm talking 30s, 40s. Now we're moving up, right? Yeah, like, I'm going to cheat on my wife. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Moving up, moving up, moving up, moving up. Look, cocaine, hookers, blah, 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 blah. bam. And then we got to this other area right here. We're almost to the point where we're all the way over. And when that happens, naturally, the reaction is it's going to flip back. It always does right? throughout history. So here's the thing. Right. So I think we're getting to the point where it's going to flip so far that we might get back to the point where people are like, eh, go fuck your mother. I don't, I mean, maybe not that bad, but you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But like, I don't care. Like what, what happened to the sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt me. Yeah, I mean, it all comes back to we're trying to make people laugh, like, and however we're trying to do it. Like, Bill Burr does, you know, and I, I, I love you know, him. It, he's my yeah, favorite. he's he's my favorite too. And I, I was so lucky that because 
I performed with him a few times outside that we were performing at the Silver Lake Church, like back uh, over there. And, um, and he would come out, Eliza would come out, like all these big comedians would come out to work on their stuff so they could prepare for their tours and stuff. And it was safe. It, it was outdoors at the time. But it was so fun seeing him work. And, you know, but he does these rants and he can, he can, you know, go south too with audiences sometimes. I mean, he didn't with us, but he even, I heard about, he went to the comedy store after he had a soft set because he, he offended somebody and they got upset. And I was with him at the comedy store in the belly room once and he walked a couple people and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he's hilarious, but, and that's, it. he's trying to make you laugh, but you know, every, whenever you do edgy comedy, you have the risk of offending people. And that's just the way life is. You, you, but you, you can't play it like that. You can't edit everything you say because you don't want to offend one person. You know what I mean? It's like... Well, and that's the thing, too, is if you're always worried about offending... Because this has happened to me, too. If you're worried about offending one person or how somebody will react, and you're, you actually start losing your authentic self. Yeah. Because you're not truly saying, you know what? No, I don't agree with that. I, I don't like that. Fuck that. You're like, oh, well, I might offend somebody if I say that. So yeah. I, I might, you know, God forbid if it pops up on a thing. And that's why I, I just love Elon Musk. Did you see his tweet yesterday? Not the latest, I no. Fucking died. Well, I love him because I bought his stock at 25. But. I love, well, yes, I, I wish I loved him that way. Um, no, he, he, like Elizabeth Warren put, sub tweeted like some tax thing and was like, you know, we're going to fix this loophole so people like Elon Musk pay their fair share. And he wrote, you remind me of this, of my friend's mom growing up. She would just randomly yell at people for no reason. But thanks for your input, Senator Karen. <laughs> I was like, ah, I'm dead. This guy's amazing. Oh, he is funny. I wanted to tweet back, hey, listen, Elizabeth Warren, aren't you a public servant that's worth millions of dollars? That's not supposed to happen. Obviously, you took advantage of those loopholes too. So right back at you. <laughs> but I'm like, I fucking love him. But he, he can do that because he's like, who's better than me? No one. I mean, fine. <laughs> well, I, I, I found it amusing when he did Saturday Night Live, when he hosted Saturday Night Live. I thought that was different. Like, you know, yeah. it caused a little uproar. Why is he doing it? I'm like, anybody could do it. It's a free country. You know, anybody could do it. he doing it? He's the richest person on the planet. He's more fascinating than a fucking celebrity. Yeah. I well, he's got it. And he's got Asperger's. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's fascinating that the, one of the... That's a, he's such an interesting person because he, you know, he's, yeah, he's one of, he's probably one, of, he's one of the wealthiest people in the world and he's brilliant in a lot of ways. And then he's got kind of this social awkwardness and, and, and then he's got these different thoughts, but those different thoughts are what makes you good a lot of times. I mean, I really think that every time we have a weakness, that can be a strength. Yeah. Because if you, if you utilize your weakness properly, that can become your greatest strength. Yeah. And that's what's fascinating about him to me is that he's got, he's definitely got some social awkwardness and maybe Asperger's or whatever, but like, it's well, he fascinating. Does, he came out and said that. Yeah. He does have Asperger's. Yeah. But usually those people are some of the most, like their IQs are off the charts. Yeah. So interesting. And we'll see where he goes. We just don't know what he's going to do next year. The, he's unpredictable too. Like we, we don't know what's uh he could, and he even tweeted that he might, hey, what do you guys think? <laughs> this is fun. He said, I might quit my company and become a, a, an influencer. <laughs> I, I mean, I think he's totally I mean, kidding. He's, he's but he throws, stuff out, he throws stuff out there just to like get a reaction to people, obviously, which is very funny. I know. I just want to like go back and pick his tweets and just do a whole episode on Elon Musk tweets. I mean, I think it'd be freaking hilarious. Because yeah. you would just be laughing. I'm like, this guy is, this guy's a freaking legend, right? Like Jeff Bezos is not he he seems like he's got the personality of a piece of wood <laughs> you know what i'm saying jeff i'm sure you're amazing and i'd love to meet you one day and, and strategize but i mean he well, you could ask his ex-wife about that see what she thinks going back to the marriage oh she's idea. lovely you should marry her mackenzie <laughs> is awesome doesn't she i don't know about well, the see I, I i don't know her i, I yeah, i haven't gotten much of it uh, she seems really nice very charitable very uh yeah not the new back. one the old one yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, but it is amazing. Like, uh, you know, and then he's out there. He's, you know, with his cowboy hat on trying to fly into space over and over again. Space, he's taking space, space cowboy literally, I guess. I don't know. It's weird. Okay. This is what's so weird. For some reason on Instagram, I've had a couple like weird things pop up like accounts like in your search thing. So speaking of space, you know how there's like flat earthers out there? Like people yeah. that think the earth is flat. So 
I was like, oh, this is hilarious. So I'm looking Wait, at it. Wait, it's not? Well, oh, okay. <laughs> then, right. Here's the thing. None of us fucking, do we know? I don't know. But they're saying, they're trying to like, so I'm looking at this account. I'm like, huh, this is really weird. And they have all these things that prove that it wouldn't be like, how could the gravity just keep the water in? If it actually goes like this, the boat would be like this. And this would be like this. And I'm like, huh. So here's my question. I'm like, listen, I don't, I'm not a flat earther. I don't, but I'm also open to hearing evidence. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Because like until I'm proven another way, but the earth is round in, in my opinion as of now, but I thought this was very interesting, but here's the question I have. If the earth was indeed flat, why on earth would they concoct such a lie to say it was round? And what would be the benefit of that? Just to fund NASA? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's uh, why I wanted to write these people. If you know a flat earther, can you please get them on my podcast? Because I really want to ask this question. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's scary, though, to, the idea of falling off the earth if you just take a boat out for a week, a, a nice cruise. Well, you um, can't. That's, <laughs> you can't. So that's where it's kind of like, huh? Like, but it's like, why, why would they concoct such a lie? I don't know. I don't, yeah, it's always hard to, yeah, what's, what, there's probably, normally if there's a lie, there's a big financial benefit. So probably there's somebody who buys or whatever COVID. to feed into no, that. <laughs> Thank God we've had Earth taken from, you know, the moon and we've had it taken from satellites and other stuff. And that's, oh, but that's just, that could be computer. Uh, and, uh, well, yeah, just like your green screen I see in your back. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm doing my flat Earth on. podcast. We could put you on Mars right now. That's, that's yeah, I could. That's the scary part about it. But yeah, it's really interesting. I would love to get an astronaut on his deathbed and be like, did you actually go? What happened to you? But yeah, if you have a flat earth friend, please send them my way. Oh, I will. Yeah, I don't, but I'll, I'll definitely look for one. Everybody has. But I like the people, you know, people don't think we landed on the moon too. The great thing about that is there's the video evidence of the slow motion. You couldn't do slow motion back then when they, yeah. uh, when they're broadcasting. So that's proof right there, obviously. But, but why do you think they didn't go back? Um, well, I've been there, done that. <laughs> Wasn't a lot to find. I don't know. Maybe we'll be back at some point. I don't know. I just feel like we're all going to go through this life and then we're going to die. And we're just like Jesus or God or whatever you believe in. He's just going to sit us up there and be like, did you guys have fun? Like I had a sense of humor. Guess what? <laughs> the earth ain't round. There's no space. You're in a ferment and this is heaven. So what do you think? <laughs> See, that's a good thing. We know God has a sense of humor based on a lot of the stuff that's been created. So, Well, he so, definitely, yeah. some of the people, I mean, there's definitely demons out here. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's very, it's kind of funny. And that's why I encourage all of you, if you're taking life too seriously, to step back and just start laughing. Because my favorite quote was actually, you know, we make plans and God laughs and it's so true. Yeah. We really don't have a lot of control over much. Yeah. Well, it's all an illusion of control. It's kind of like the matrix. We all think that we have this very safe, controllable life and then a, a storm comes and kicks our ass or, or a pandemic or whatever else. So. Right. Like we, the we don't have, we do have I decided to wear this ugly tacky shirt with these earrings. Like that was my choice. Oh, looks good to me, but I, have, I, I buy stuff at Target. So what do I know? There you go. And then I got like, I think Christmas, Christmas pants on, like sweatpants. <laughs> well, you're starting early. That's good. And then I'm going to go down and I'm going to do a quick ass workout. You know, got to do some ass shit. Ass stuff well, ass is good. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, 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 well, I live in West Hollywood. I can't say that. If people might get the wrong idea. Yeah, that's true. You have, you have people lined up on your doorstep. That's that is for sure. <laughs> Wait, so where can people like, um, where's your, tell us about like your stand up and where can people find you? For, to come watch you well stand up you know typically oh i, I have a show um well i'm gonna be at the con well that this probably by the time this airs i'll be down there right i'm doing this, the la jolla comedy is store airing, this is airing tomorrow so oh wow okay we recorded well, hey, if you hear early, this i thought we were like live no nope. oh that's pretty cool yeah no, that's a quick turnaround like a lot of people take a week or two Usually not. Um, i'll be at the la jolla, la jolla comedy store on december 22nd for my birthday Yay. um it's gonna be tough because i'm turning 26 so that would be <laughs> difficult and then um I started my own show at Flappers. Have you been to Flappers before? In Burbank? Yeah. I have been there once. I actually loved the room. It was great. I love that room. So I've, I'm, I've been producing a monthly show in the main room. So I've got that on Sunday. And, okay. then, um, and, then, and then I'll have, you know, I have just ongoing shows. I've kind of slowed down a little bit. Um, I'm not, I've been turning down a lot of gigs lately. Just some rooms I just don't feel as comfortable in. 
even though you know I'm probably fine. But um, probably fine. But so, everybody's entitled to to feel safe on their own. So don't feel bad about that. Yeah, yeah. So like you know you can find about it. Uh, my website, Sharp Cut Comedy. I've got um, Sharp uh, Comedian Gary Robinson on inst Instagram, uh, Sharp Cut Productions on Instagram mm -hmm. for all my stuff, you know, photography, yeah. uh, video, comedy, music, you know, DJ Sharp Cut on Instagram. All right. I love oh, it. Oh, Linktree, Linktree forward slash Sharp Cut has all my stuff. Okay. That comes in handy. Do you have a Linktree? Uh, yes, but I haven't really used it. Now you just inspired me to use it. What, where can we find the song? The songs on Linktree and also, oh, DJ Sharpcut on Spotify and YouTube and wherever else. It's on all the platforms. So What's just type in DJ Sharpcut, you'll find uh, it, it Could Only Be You, The Power yeah. of One, uh, Dark Angel, Trump the Traitor. I don't know how you feel about Trump, but uh, <laughs> that's I'm that's in my the middle. Song. I'm like Switzerland, dude. I don't yeah. say anything. Yeah, so I got that, and then uh, I've got some new songs on the way. Oh, I've got a new one called um, I Can't Tell You. It's okay. about being a friend with a somebody and then kind of following for them so i think it, for for if you if you're in love with one of your friends play this song and give them a hint it, it'll be coming out in, probably in a week or two in uh, two weeks yeah. you realize that most people that are in the friend zone usually remain there that is the toughest thing in the world to get out of by far like there's exactly. nothing more difficult than getting out of the friend zone i put everybody in the friend zone oh really well that's why you're single <laughs> that's why you're not married <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the best way to fucking end the podcast right there. Oh, he just zinged it to me. You're right. You're right. Oh, yeah. Let me give you one piece of advice as we go out, though. What? Uh, because my, my parents have just celebrated their 57th wedding anniversary this year. You want to know what the secret is to a long and happy marriage of 57 years? What? Hearing loss. Ah, that's a good one. That <laughs> my dad's hearing is going in his right ear. He always sits my mom to the right side of him. Because you can't be annoyed by what you can't hear. So that'll help you find a husband. Just find one that the hearing's slowly going. Exactly. Well, I always said, I'm like, oh, I'll just go to Florida and find a guy that's about to have a stroke. <laughs> you know? That's another good, <laughs> good technique. <laughs> Listen, financially, financial would be fine. It would just be nice to have somebody to pay at least. I don't need to. Most girls are like, I want somebody to pay all my bills. I'm like, I just want somebody to split the bills. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'm, I'm planning on getting like two or three homes, so it'd be nice if I only had to pay for like one and a half of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you got it all planned out. That's good. Exactly. Exactly. All right, you guys. Thanks for listening. Listen, go to DJ Sharpcut. Follow him on all the the platforms. If you're getting married, check out uh, the song. Maybe it's maybe it's a song uh, you can play at your wedding. And uh, look out for, for more stuff from him. And hopefully when COVID's fully over, I mean, somehow it's over where I am, not where you are. I mean, it really isn't, but it's just over in my head, um, that you will be back on the road. And maybe one day we can do a stand-up bit together. I might be too dirty for you, though. I don't think so. Nobody's too dirty for me. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Okay, I'm in. Count me in. Let's do it. I got a big right. following in Denver. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 so. it's gonna be great all right you guys uh yeah make sure to please follow our guest uh like and subscribe the show um please leave a comment do anything you can share it with your friends do everything you can or else i'm gonna have to start an only fans page and that is not gonna be pretty so okay don't uh, do anything guys let's <laughs> let's get her to start only fans <laughs> exactly right <laughs> all right you guys uh be kind to each other be safe be happy kick some ass and we'll see you next time to find out who's next hey your host here madison malloy please make sure to subscribe to the show on all podcast platforms and please rate and review us on itunes and spotify also if you have any questions or comments you can email us at contact at next i thank you again for listening bye